Another bedtime story, one time for your mentality, right? We're going to give it to you right here on Gunners Collective. And in manual style, it's in a direct fashion. Shower, right? Trip out. Now, as you can tell by that thumbnail right there, you're wondering what the fuck is going on about the a fence. Looking through a peering at yours truly. I'm like this. And he's like, okay, I don't want that smoke. Do I want that? I don't know. One never knows, does one. The wind's blowing. But what I do know is this bedtime tale is entitled The Big Bad Wolf of the Yarda. That's right. Da -dum. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Nah, not Jaws, that's it, but the big bad wolf himself, and he's going to huff and puff and blow a motherfucking cell down. Now, trip out. A lot of people ask me all the time, who's the craziest, most violent individual you ever ran into on a yard? And I ran into a lot of them, homes, and it seems like every year there's someone bigger and badder on that yard. And you don't even have to necessarily be the biggest, baddest motherfucker on that yard. You could be the smallest, kindest, nicest, gentlest, quietest, evilest, meanest, fucking treacherous individual that you ever done seen but at the same time one never knows does one all i do know is that in prison homes it's made up of a lot of convicts it's made up of a lot of people that have been in the streets and have wiggled and have different ways of wiggling and have different ways of doing what they do now a lot of people ask me well who was the craziest right and i can go on and on and on forever on different individuals but what i wanted to touch on was a couple of incidences of crazy individuals that took place while I was incarcerated. A couple of you guys have heard these stories. Some of you haven't. For those of you that haven't, so let's get buckle up. We about to ride like a motherfucker, indubitably. Now trip out. I was in Tracy. It was 2000 and something. I can't remember, right? But it was the mid 2000s, and I'm sitting there in Tracy, and I'm settled up with the homeboy named Cisco de Sunnyvale. I remember he was one of the most righteous sellies I've ever had to date. Me and him just clicked. We just hit it off right from the gate, man. We're in there kicking back, stingery, todo all my. Um, you know, Tracy is what it is. We were on J-Wing at this particular point in time. We were still active. So it had to be at least 2005, 2006. And things were rocking, right? They were rolling. Um, but at the same time, we were on a lockdown situation because we were, we were just about to come off lockdown. Prior to us getting in Tracy, there was a lockdown situation with the Wolf Pack, which is a white organization that were running rampant in Tracy and all around the California Department of Corrections. I don't even know if they're still, if they still exist, but I know that the Norteños were on their headpieces pretty tough, right? At least at Tracy. It was a green light on these guys and we were just gonna come off lockdown and we were gonna make our moves and power, our power moves and shower shoes. Now trip out, without saying too much, um, we, the way they sell you up is with your own people, with your own kind, your own race, if you're a Crip, you're going to be with the Crip. More than likely, you are a non-affiliated black. If you're a Sangre, same thing. Strike that, reverse it. If you're a white guy, you're going to be with another white guy. Sprinkle them in, brother. The woods, stay with the woods. And of course, North Daniels, North, South and South, and so on and so forth, right? There was no Perros at this time. They don't usually go to Tracy Homes. That's not their reception. They go to Wasco, right? So anyways, trip out. Um, I remember it was evening time. And there would be buses that would roll up from, say, High Desert, Pelican Bay. You know, people that jumped on the bus early in the morning, they were on that motherfucker transpacking all day long. So you would know when there was new arrivals in the building because somebody was, that was a guy or basically somebody that was looking out, you know, he was on post, would yell out, Hey, keys on tier or keys on the fucking over here or there's fucking new arrivals on three or whatever the case may be. Um, there was always going to be an alert. You know, someone was always going to yell out. People were watching it. I mean, you're bored. That's it. You ain't got nothing else to do but peer out that fucking cell all day long like a J-Cat, right? So anyways, I hear, hey, no arrivals on J, no arrivals on J. That meant there was some hentai coming in. Now, of course, man, we're looking for any type of indications. Any type of indications of the enemigas, someone that slipped through the cracks, someone that got caught slipping, or we just want to be nosy and fucking see who's coming in. So as I'm looking to see who's coming in, me and the home down here and the home of Cisco's tall, he's up here. We're looking both through the fucking, uh, through the mirror or through the glass. Uh, we see several individuals come and we see a big old monstrous white boy, right? Now, this was the type of white boy. I don't even want to call him, I call him a white man. You need to separate this guy from what you're thinking in your mind. Have you ever seen the beast from that movie fucking Shot Caller? Okay, times 10. That's how big this dude was. He was bald-headed, had a big old fucking beard. He looked like a mix between Manson and Wes Watson, only he didn't fucking stick shit in his ass. 
I think, right? Anyways, so the Vato walks in and he's looking around. He's kind of mugging. They got cuffs on him. And of course, they take the cuffs off um, and they take him up to his, oh no, Spence, he still had the cuffs on him. They take him, march him up to the cell. Now, right next door to us, there was a young white guy. He was probably in his mid-20s. I don't know. I never chopped it up with him. He wasn't my style of a person to chop it up with. And you kind of stick to your own people. Um, I think the only thing I ever said to him was like, hey, Spence, Holmes, can you shoot this line down there? Um, and he assisted me one time in fishing. Now, but um, for the most part, man, we never had no words. But I seen him once or twice. They brought him out of his cell to take him to medical, to give him a shot, or whatever the case may be. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention to his program, but I knew if the doors popped out, cut his head off. Bang, bang, allegedly. Now, anyway, so we got his ass under surveillance. We're doing fine. Um, they bring this big old fucking monster up the stairs. You can hear the steps. Boom, boom, boom. You can feel the motherfucking tira shaking. Even the even the black guys are on the tier like, damn, that's a big old white boy, right? Brothers is on alert, right? Everyone's like, so whoop, so whoop, right? And then you could rip. You're hearing motherfuckers. Uh, they're starting to speak in Swahili. People are sign languaging. This guy poses a threat or he looks like a target. Okay, and what I mean by that is when you see someone that's intimidating, someone that just has that eye of the tiger, they have that fucking look, they're a big bad wolf. They're automatically going to become a target and someone that you need to pay attention to because, hey, they might be the nicest motherfucker in the world, but they don't look like it, right? So that's gay. When you see a monstro, you know a monstro. Anyway, so they're bringing this guy up and yeah, my luck. He's my next door neighbor. So of course I hear him, he gets up against the fucking cell door. And the young white guy's probably in there fucking drawing or fucking jacking off or whatever he was doing at that particular point in time. But I can hear just this, I'm like, dude, so I, I, need to, I need to be up to par, right? So I'm right there staying aware of what's going on. And I can hear the full-blown conversation between this officer, the CEO, and this guy. Now, from what I hear, this guy was on a court transpack and he was just coming back from court. He was a lifer doing 93 plus years um, all day long. We found this out after the fact. But I hear him telling the flagger that they just had a long ride from high desert. So I said, okay, this motherfucker's on a four yard. He's about that smoke. Anyone that comes from high desert, be aware, I see. Be aware because them type of people that are coming from high desert rock differently, okay? They're not reception guys that got those that just came off the streets that are still fucking doing burpees like this with their backs all bent trying to get up to par. These vatos are, are survival to the fittest type individuals. These are gladiators, homes. They've been through it. He's probably been down 20 something years, homes, and he's looking at a hundred and something more, right? He ain't giving a fuck. At no point in time, and coming from a place like High Desert where it's high intensity at all times, you know he's ready for whatever. Anyway, so he tells the placa, he looks in his cell and he's like, hey, um, I need to be celled alone. I got a chrono for a cell alone chrono. Now, it was at that point the placa should have been like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? Hey, don't trip. You know what I mean? Let me take you back to wherever I need to take you back to. Let me put you in the shower area or wherever I got to put you. Let me isolate you while I figure this shit out. But of course, the placas being the placas, and they're getting down being as how it is. He said, hey, look, man, I'm going home in a little bit. I ain't trying to go through all that shit. Just sell up with this motherfucker to the morning. We'll deal with it in the morning. The guy's like, hey, I need to speak to a lieutenant, a captain, somebody in charge. I ain't going in there, right? And he goes, are you refusing a movement? Now, of course, this guy being a high power individual like he was, you cannot from any organization refuse a movement. If you refuse a movement while you're in prison, you're going to be all bad. I, you know, hey, son's getting I refuse. Oh, yeah? Well, they're not going to refuse when they're fucking bombing on your ass, right? They're going to put it in you. So anyways, this guy's like, I ain't refusing nothing. I'm just trying to tell you that I have a cell alone chrono. Um, you know what I mean? There's certain things I can't speak on. And the fucking black is like, look, I ain't trying to deal with it right now. And I understand the, the cop's way of seeing it. He just wanted to fucking lie. Hey, get in your cell. Lock it up, bro. Let me fucking go back and fucking look at Pornhub, right? He just wanted to do his own thing. But at the same time, this monster, I call him the monster, right? He was a big, big bad wolf. He kept um, keeping the conversation going. He was like, look, man, I ain't trying to go up in there. The, the black is like, look, are you scared? Are you a scared of him, spider? You're going in. The cop's like, we'll deal with your chrono and everything in the morning. It's too late. Everyone, that's anyone, has left. I'm not going to call the captain down here to deal with this bullshit. You know what? This is Tracy, homie. This ain't high desert. This, this is how we get down. And in that fashion, the black is getting all saying it with his chest, all brave like Wes Watson, right? He's just getting all brave. He thinks he's whack 100 and shit. Ugly than a motherfucker. I remember that CEO. Little short Mexican, ugly motherfucker. Anyways, this guy looks in one more time. He says, I'm telling you right now, if I go in that cell, I'm going to kill my celly. It was at that point, the cop kind of took a step back, but got frustrated and said, look, I don't care about none of that. Do what you have to do, Holmes. It is what it is. You're going in that cell. Now, me, from the perspective of just right here, I'm safe. I'm in a whole different cell, a whole different race. 
I ain't got nothing to worry about. That motherfucker comes in, homes. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm going to do the offense defense. You know what I mean? I'm going to do whatever the fuck I have to do to survive. I'm a survivor. I said, this ain't Fantasy Island. The plane, the plane. If I see a big motherfucker coming in, homes, I'm trying to knock his engine off. So look, trip out. The young white guy could only suspect he was in there nervous than a motherfucker. He's seen a monster outside his door, a kukui, right? And he's like, fuck. And then this vato just said, I'll kill this motherfucker if you put me in there with him. I don't know about you, gente, but I know about me. The moment that door would have cracked, I'd have took flight. Okay? I'd have been like Denzel Washington drunk fucking trying to land a plane. But I'd have been in that motherfucker handling my business. Because what would have happened is if he would have flighted his celly immediately, he probably would have got fucking choked out. But at the same time, the placas would have been forced to separate the two, put one in K-Wing or one in a, a, a wherever he's going to put him and the other one wherever he's going to put him. Either way, Holmes, you live to fucking fight another day, Craig. You know what I mean? Use these, Craig. Use these, right? Nah, that guy had something else planned. So anyways, the youngster didn't make no move or say nothing. Maybe he thought he could talk himself out of this situation or the guy was just boasting and bragging about what he would do. Yeah, the wind blew. Anyways, so the motherfucker goes in the cell. We heard the key term. It is what it is, right? We're like, okay, orale. Dispensa la tira. So me and my cellar are up. We're listening. Hey, you think something's going down in there? Child, as as we don't hear no noise. We hear a little bit of... <laughs> we're thinking somebody's jumping on his bed or whatever. So we're on the wire homes, which is the back fucking window. We're just doing our regular program. You know, program shutdown comes and goes. Um, you know what I mean? I'm like the... <laughs> You know, I mean? I'm trying to get my sleep on because as a Norteño, you're up all fucking day, right? And you're tired. The moment them lights crack, you crack, right? Bam, I'm done. The moment the homeboy goes, Pets on la tira. What? Buenos dias. A ti. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get your last five minutes on before you have to roll that mattress up and get to functioning. So everyone knows the game or anyone that's been locked up as an active Norteño or Southside or whatever the case. Now trip out. The next morning rolls around. Now, May, I told you we were on lockdown. So we, they were giving us our trays with our sack lunches in the morning. So you would get your breakfast and your lunch in the morning. And then dinner would roll around. And that was that. You had nothing else coming, homes. You know what I mean? Hey, no coking and smile. Nothing. Just here, toma. Eat or don't eat, bitch. I don't give a fuck, right? That's pretty much what you had coming. Um, and we try to conserve the most we can because we we're in that motherfucking... I'm starving, man. Right? Struggling. The struggle was real. So anyways, trip out. Um, it's breakfast time, and I don't forgot about the whole conversation, you know, what happened the day before, you know what I mean? I'm trying to take the lagañas out of my eyes. Fuck, hey, what's for breakfast? A hard-boiled egg and cat food? Fuck, hey, Spence off. I'm going to see if I can work my cell out of his egg. Homes, he could have this shit. And then all of a sudden, I hear the guy go, hey, I remember that breakfast. I'll never forget it in my life. It was a hard-boiled egg. It was like, it looked like cat food. I guess it was supposed to be some hash, um, some fucking uh, 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 malto meal stuff, and some peaches. Can't forget it, right? Salt, pepper, and whatever. And anyways, fucking, I hear the fucking black teller, hey, is your celly going to eat? And the bottle's already eating his tray, and he's like, oh, he's dead. And he goes, excuse me, sir? He said, I killed that motherfucker, right? Straight up, no hesitation, uh, like I told you. He huffed, he puffed, he blew his celly down, right? Literally. Maybe, maybe he did. I don't know. But he was gone, I said. He was gone with the wind. And so they were like, hey, get on the ground, submit to restraints. Man down, man down. And that bottle, before he could let him cuff him, he said, let me finish my peaches. I'll never forget that. Let me finish my peaches real quick. Smacked his peaches back. And as they're taking him down the stairs, now there's paramedics, there's black guys. I mean, it's fucking yellow tape. It's crazy, right? We're like, fuck. I mean, my egg like, fuck. Because, you know, you can't sacrifice calories. They're taking this motherfucker down the stairs. And I swear to God, mm, my witness, I hear this motherfucker say, hey, since I didn't get to finish my breakfast, do I get an extra sack lunch? <laughs> That's the type of individuals there are in prison. That's the type of nonchalant killers there are. This man told that CEO exactly what time it was. And they didn't take the initiative to act on it. Instead, they put that kid in harm's way with the big bad wolf. And like I said, um, he blew the shingles up off his roof. Now, that was one situation that I'll never forget. And I remember all the white boys that were talking about, damn, that was a good brother. Right there, that was a good young brother he killed, right? They don't even know this motherfucker, right? And they were like, yeah, but that was a that was a batter brother right there. And so the woods are getting their brother on, right? Um, and, and everyone's talking about it, but not talking about it. You know what I'm saying? On the slenders, hey, did you see that shit? Nah, man, what happened? You're next door. I was like, I didn't hear nothing. I about to move like lasagna, that's it. You know what I mean? It was silent but deadly. It was like a fucking fart from the homeboy shadow from Frank Lawn. Almost it smelled like shit, but you never heard it coming. So that, anyways, that happens. Well, here's another incident. 
Okay, there's another incident. Um, I actually was in Corco in Corcoran, and there was a fucking uh, an OG black guy. He was a non-affiliate. He was from the Bay Area. I guess you can call him a Kumi. Maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. I don't know at this particular time. He was kind of one of them OG lifers, homes that he wasn't real OG. He was in his 50s, but this motherfucker was all swole. Didn't no one fuck with him. He kind of did his own program. I remember at this time he was the head cook in the kitchen. Most lifers usually get that head cook position, not only because they've been there for a while and they got seniority, but because they want fucking to cook shit their way. They want to have it their way, like Burger King, you see, right? So anyways, I remember he was the cook, and food was pretty good there, just based on the, I don't know what kind of fucking voodoo shit he did on it, but he knew how to get his salt and pepper on. So I remember, with, I would see him, he was on a different block, and he got transferred to my block, okay? Now, there were some unspoken stories about this guy. They were spoken on, but they were supposed to be unspoken on. I don't know. It's fucking prison. Everyone knows everything, homes, but you're not supposed to. Um, and the story goes that this bottle had, you know what I mean, did some bad things to several men. Okay, look. The elephant in the room. He was a booty bandit, right? To what they're saying. Now, um, I had never seen him in action. Like I said, I would see him in the kitchen as the head cook in the back. Once in a while, he'd come out, clean the table. Um, and I'd see him on the yarda, and he was always doing his own program, dips and shit with his headphones on. The vato was not paying attention to what I had going on. I definitely was staying as far away from that motherfucker as, as possible, right? Because I had heard the stories. So anyways, um, there's like a couple young black dudes on the tier like to play a lot, like to joke around. They like to gamble in the day room. Now, the way the makeup of this place is, the blacks and the northerners function on the same side of the day room, whereas the southsiders and the whites function on the other side of the day room. That's just how it always has been. That's probably how it always was. I, well, I don't know. They ended all still. Just, they might be mixing. I don't know. But everyone has their stake on that yard. That everyone has their space, homie. And everyone has fought for their foundation and fought for their fucking area. And that's just the way it's going to be. You don't disrespect anyone's area. If your cell is on that side of the day homes, you better walk outside of a line. There's a line that goes around. You better be on the outside of that line. If you are in the inside homes, you might. The wind's blowing. You just might get a warning. There might be, hey, SC, you need to get on the other side of the linea homes. They're not going to do it disrespectfully. They're going to do it gently, verbally, and viciously. You're going to know by the way they look, right? And by the fucking, their little pico sticking out of their ass. You're just going to be, damn, is that a tail? Nah, that's a fucking bone crusher. I say, you see it popping out? He's ready just to go, <clears throat> and that's it. He's got it, right? Uncap, black, black, right back in. Sasuke, he comes in the place to win. So anyways, you do what you does, cuz, well... This big black dude had got transferred onto our building. So, you know, of course, he's with his people right there. He sat a couple tables away. And the homeboys are like, yeah, watch out for this about the man. I heard the about this fucking, he's all bad. But you got to understand, all bad in a sense of, there were, he had some priors to doing bad things. Not to the hint, not to us. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if he even fucking batted an eyebrow, we'll cut his eyelashes off. That's it. We're not playing, right? North Angeles, we're not playing at no particular point in time. If anything, homeboy, we were on our vicious shit. So anyways, we were, our eyes were like, dude, we're at all points in time. We had a homeboy that stood just like this. Well, guy, he was ready to let the fuck, well, guy, bird fly, homeboy. Anyone that wanted problems, we had scraps in every fucking particular part of town. What, whatever, whatever you want to do, homie, you know what I mean? Whatever you want to do. I got a motherfucking bullet for every motherfucking bump on your face, that's it, right? We were ready. Now, trip out. This Volta had priors, and some of his own people knew the Crips, I remember, stood away from this guy. They did not like him, but they weren't moving on him. You know, it was kind of like none of their business, but the Bay Area Cats, they were in like Flynn with them. He was an OG, he was older. So it was all good. You know, I'm not going to say the Bay Area Cats weren't about that wiggle because everybody was at this place. But at this time, homes, they weren't really tripping on what this guy had going on, right? Um, and what he had going on um, was bad stuff. It didn't take but about two months, homes. He, he was taking young white dudes in the cell and choking them out and molesting them. Okay, um, now let's trip out. Of course, these guys were scared. These were like, they were not woods. They were, you know, the white boys that kick back with the woods and think they are, but they're really not. Okay, well, when the woods found out about exactly what he was doing, homes, they uh, basically butchered this guy, right? But prior to that, bro, we called him the big bad, literally, this is where I got to start from, the big bad wolf, because he would prey on these guys. He would walk by, he'd whistle, he'd bat his eyes. He flexed his muscles. This Vato really acted like he was getting that highness. And these Vato, the scarier they got, they got, the crazier he got. And he would just snatch them up and take them in the motherfucking cell and do bad shit. Now, I never seen this go down. Because if I seen it, I said, hey, hey, sir, to the homeboy that was doing this thing. Is that supposed to happen, hey? Because, uh, you know, this ain't American me. That, that shit's not supposed to happen, right? You know? Anyways, 
it was happening. Um, I guess he went a little too far and fucking started doing and did something to someone who actually told his people. And I can't believe the other couple of guys didn't. They were so scared of this guy, what he was going to do to him. He was getting doing him long dick style that they were like, no, I can't breathe, right? Their, their fucking, their stomach was hurting. I always wondered why those young white guys were holding their stomach when they walked to the chow hall. Now I know. Anyways, so this volatile fucking, uh, they end up getting him, but he was a dangerous individual. He was dangerous in the sense that everybody knew what he was about, but no one made a move. Now I've always wondered to myself how someone could get away with this, how someone could be a booty bandit or a weirdo like that. And everybody fucking knows, but nobody's doing this thing. And it was the same old excuse. Well, that's their people. Well, that's their people. Why well, ain't even tripping, homes? Hey, he ain't fucking part of us, homes. We ain't tripping. And that's an excuse that's used a lot of the times. Let their own hint they deal with it. Let their own people deal with it. Now, I know this, if that would have ever made a pass or fucking, like I said, batted an eyelash at any of the homeboys or the Southsiders, one thing is for Shoddy, though, on gang gang, right? That motherfucker would have got his whole motherfucking gachettes cut off, right? Homeboys are not playing. That motherfucker would have been in there walking like the hobbler, homo. He'd have been in there like, my precious. That motherfucker would have fucking cut his tongue out. Real talk. Anyways, you know, I just wanted to tell this bedtime story on a couple big bad wolves. I have a lot more stories to tell, a lot more things that are actual, factual, in real life. And we're going to get to that, man. I hope you enjoy some of these tales because they're real. This ain't duck tales. They say, ooh, no, this is that real style, homie. This happened, A, and it was very unfortunate the way it happened. But guess what? <laughs> these are my stories, and I'm going to tell them. Anyways, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. I hope that you get everything that you want coming to you. Enjoy your weekend, Estes. Enjoy your weekend. Have a good time. Stay vigilant. Stay poised. Stay aware. You know, that's always a word that I use. And stay respectful to, to those that you come in contact with. If you're out there in the club, as they say, if you're out there getting it, you know, um, make sure roll mangoes to the bathroom before you do this. You already know what it is, man. Hey, if you like this, please hit that like and subscribe with a thumbs up. If not, thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears guns crown. And I'm going to continue to strive and struggle and do what I does for the people, by the people. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. That was like Jaws until them white boys fucking slid the shit. Then he was like this. <laughs> Guess what? The next day, the egg sucked. The new cook didn't use that spice. Bang, bang, the gun.